What is up, Dream Media family? This is Zach, and welcome back to another episode. On today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to fully maximize the potential of your brand new Morant Cinema 50. I'm gonna be showing you how to actually utilize the full 11 channel processing for my people out there who want to beef up their system with an external amplifier. All right, let's get into it. All right, welcome back Dream Media family. If you guys have not been following along with this series, make sure you go back and check out the full transformation. I have showed you guys basically taking this room right here from a billiards pool table room to a full blown home theater. I showed everything from wiring the room to setting up the screen, projector, cabinet, speakers, cutting in wall speakers, in ceiling speakers, as well as making those initial connections for maximum the built-in amplification for the Morant Cinema 50, which is a nine channel amplifier. Today, we're taking it to the next level. I'm gonna be hooking up an audio control separate amplifier that is gonna drive my bed layer, my front sound stage and my rears, and then we're gonna use the rest of the channels to drive all of my Dolby Atmos speakers. I have a total of six Dolby Atmos speakers, the full Focal 300 series all the way around. For my front sound, stage, I have the Focal 302s, which feature their flax woofers. I got four, four inch flax woofers across the front sound stage for my front left, right, and center speaker, as well as the inverted aluminum magnesium dome tweeter. And that is matched through the whole system. I have the 300 series IW6s in the rear of the room. And then overhead, I have the, at my rear top at most, I have the 300 series ICW6. And then I have for my my front and mid at most the aimable version which is the focal I see a6. And again, all of those have those flax woofers and the inverted aluminum magnesium dome tweeter. I also have at the rear of the room two SVS PB16 Ultras. All right, guys, that is the recap on the room. Today, what I'm going to show you how to do is connect the two PB16 Ultras as well as a five channel bed layer and six overhead Atmos. Let's get into it. All right, so before we go any further, I just want to talk about cables that you're going to need in order to utilize a set separate amplifier, you're gonna use the pre-outs on the back of your Cinema 50, and you're gonna need some RCA cables. You don't need quite this high-end, but I've been doing some hi-fi setups here recently, so I had these cables laying around. I'm gonna take these out of the pre-outs for the channels that I want to power to my external amplifier. All right, I'm gonna grab the amp now. All right. For amplification, I'm gonna be using Audio Control. This is one of my favorite amplifier companies and it's not crazy expensive. It's not cheap, but it's really good quality stuff. This is gonna be the uh, Pantages G4 home theater amplifier from Audio Control. And let's look at the back. This is really the important stuff here. All right, on the back of the unit, you have balanced inputs, which I'll probably be using this for a while, especially because I wanna check out the new Marantz AB10 and the Amp10 probably still stick with audio control amplification for the full system. Not 100% sure, but regardless, if you have a higher end system or say like a trend off system, you will have balanced outputs. This Cinema 50, it's a good value unit. It's not going to be, you know, stupid high end, so it doesn't have that option. What we're going to be doing is taking our inputs here and then it's going to take the audio through the input, amplify it. So we're taking the audio out of the pre-out of the Marantz, which is in here, I'll show you in just a minute the connection, outputting the signal with no amplification out of the front sound stage of my surrounds here through RCA. And then we're gonna have to select which type of output we want. We're gonna select mono on all of these. You can do stereo as well. All right, so we're gonna be taking our pre-outs into our RCAs here. If you have a higher end amplifier you would then connect to your XLR connections here and then we're going to connect our speaker wires that are going out to the speakers here and we're going to do that on all five of our bed layers front left right center and surround left and right okay I'm going to go ahead and move some things around so that I can make space for this bad boy all right before we go any further let's talk cables so 
I have my speaker cables that are going out to my passive speakers right here. I have my top mids, top rears, top fronts, surrounds, which are going to be for my low effects behind me. And that's it. I also have additional surround back, or if I wanna do a seven channel bed layer, that's what these are for. And an RO3D voice of God terminating here, but I got banana plugs on all these so I can make quick connections. And then my front sound stage cables are right here, just loosely sitting here. So I'm gonna run all of my speaker connections over to this side. So I have plenty of room for everything to breathe. And I'm gonna install a second vent on that side from Salamander Designs to keep this amplifier running nice and cool so it lasts for years to come. But I do wanna point out, as you can hear, these are my subwoofer cables. Well. My PB16 Ultras from SVS actually have built-in amplification in the subwoofer itself, and it's plugged into high-voltage power. So this is just a transfer cable, an RG6 tipped with an RCA connection. So this cable is just going out of the pre-out on the back of the Marant Cinema 50 to the subwoofer's LFE, low frequency equalizer input. So the crossover and all of the level, everything is being done through the processor. So really this unit is only gonna be used to power the overhead effects our Atmos, our six Dolby Atmos speakers. So I'm gonna have to separate out from this cluster my subwoofer cables, cause they're gonna go to the processor and then all of my speaker cables or part of my speaker cab cables, my bed layer are gonna go over to my amplifier. So now I'm gonna separate these out to the appropriate locations. And this was just done really roughly when I initially had set up the room and did all the wiring. So now that I'm starting to get into some of the final connections here for the configuration since it's going to stay like this for a while i'm going to be using velcro this is really nice because then you're not getting sticky tape all over your wires but you can order this from us when you get your setup too it's just bulk wire and you can cut it like this and then it just holds all of your cables like that see a little bit easier to like you know do it undo it do it undo it i'm gonna be making a lot of different connections and checking a ton of different equipment and configurations out for you guys so uh, th this makes more sense for me rather than the electrical tape okay so let's talk about this velcro subs definitely going right to the unit now let's look at our additional lines these are for our ro3d voice of god definitely point of having that part of the system at this very second okay so these are for future use in case i want to do a bed layer for surrounds and surround rears for a seven channel bed layer and uh, ro3d now i'm going to separate out the different connections so subwoofers are going to the marantz and all of our overheads are going to the Marantz. So these two are going over to the audio control and these six, one, are gonna go to our Marantz for our heights. So now I'm gonna just cut some pieces of Velcro off. And lastly, I'm gonna kind of pull back our surrounds and just leave it as like in with the bundle because we don't need these right now the surrounds and the RO3D. So all of these can connect super quick and clean right to the unit. If you guys are wondering how to decide which of your cables go to which speakers, I made a detailed video showing you how to use a toner or how a little hack for a battery, um, which gets the job done as well. So these are all gonna go right into the back of the Salamander Designs cabinet. My center speaker line, center speaker can go over here with our amplifier. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull over our cables for the front left and right. All right, today, because I have such a long distance here, I'm gonna be using five meter cables to go from this side over to this side. Maybe a little bit overkill, but I just wanna make sure that I have slack to work with. 
there's nothing worse than, you know, not having the room to service the unit. So, and plus I want to show you guys how to do this. So I'm going to use cables that are just a little bit longer than necessary. You don't really need to worry about which one is going where because whenever we do our speaker tone test, I'll show you how you can quickly change it here on the back of the unit. Need a few more pieces. This is why this Velcro is so nice is you can cut it to whatever length you need. It's very inexpensive too and removable. So like these braided lines, if I was using electrical tape, I'd get the job done, but it's sticky you know, and every time you have to reapply. So I found, especially for higher end systems, nice to have the Velcro. So now run my lines between the two cabinets. <laughs> and honestly, the 15 feet is just enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my connections to the back of the unit. Okay, so now we're looking at the back of the unit. We are going to take our cables and connect to front left front right and then we're going to go to center and surround left surround right so now that all those connections are made i can connect down here well i'll wait to show you guys the programming for the banana pins uh, which terminals we need to connect to but subwoofer one and two can definitely be connected subwoofer one subwoofer two just like that. So these are all pre-outs with separate amplification. Subwoofers have their built-in amp. This is going over to the audio control. And then we're gonna use the built-in amplifiers for our Atmos, but I'm gonna have to check out the programming and view the uh, terminal connections on the on-screen setup to see which one goes where. We'll get into that in just a minute. Make sure to tighten all these up. Okay. Make sure all those are good. We got our power going out to our Claris Concerto power conditioner. And the last thing is just going to be all of our banana pins. Okay, now I'm just running my speaker wires over. This is for our left speaker. All right, so I'm gonna hook this up center, left, right, left, right, and center, and then our center, and then Gotta grab our surrounds, pull them over. Wow, and it's a little tight. And that's why you can never have enough slack. So for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and make my connections. Again, these may change. We're going in, 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 and in. Just like that. And then I'm gonna pull some of this slack out and clean up the cables behind. All right, check it out, guys. Okay like that and then I just get to grab my two last connections right here for my surrounds which I'll connect red to red black to black down right here and we need power as well don't want to forget that slide our unit in all right so we're gonna connect our power cable up here there's also a 12 volt trigger option which I will hook up. I don't have one on me right now, but you'll wanna take the trigger out of your Marantz AVR into this unit. I will have to do that at a later date, but if you're doing this, definitely hook up the trigger because then it'll automatically turn on the amplifier every time you turn on your processor, which is really the way to go. I'm go ahead and push this puppy back. All right. So now we have our Pantages G4 hooked up, all of our RCAs to the back, our analog connections, and our speakers going out to each individual speaker. I'm gonna hook up our Claris power cable, our main power cord, which is carrying clean power to the entire system. We really just need to kind of clean up this wiring. So I'm gonna make all of my powered connections and then connect my speaker wires to the preamp for the Atmos. All right, let's continue forward. Okay, 
guys, we are moving right along. Keep in mind too, this 302 can be mounted to the wall, which is what I'm going to do down the road. Right now I'm kind of in a situation where I got a bunch of products to review for you guys and I'm gonna be setting them up. So I'm trying to leave this area clean and easily adjustable. But coming soon, I will show you the permanent installation of this LCR front soundstage. Got the front grill popped on, now we're gonna power up our projector and I'm going to show you the speaker terminal connections on screen for the Marantz Cinema 50 so we can connect our speaker terminals to our Atmos. All right guys, we're moving right along. On the Marantz, I'm going to go into the setup. We're going to go down to speakers and we're going to go to manual setup, amp assign. We're going to go to 11.1 .1 channel under amp mode. We're going to go to a five channel bed layer and we're going to go with six height speakers. We're going to go top front, top middle, top rear, and we're going to pre out the fronts and we're going to check out the terminals for this. So we're going to go to surrounds, well, top front is gonna go to height one, top rear is gonna go to height two, and then top middle is gonna go to surround back. So I'm gonna bring you up close to the Marantz Cinema 50 and show you how to do that. Keep in mind, there's gonna be a Dirac Live update during this year in 2023 for um, Dirac capabilities. Whoops, I just blocked the screen. That's a safety feature for this LS800. But we'll be able to do independent subwoofer control one, two, three, four, all through Dirac Live, which I'll show you guys as soon as that update's available how to do that. Okay, so next I'm gonna bring you over to the terminals and show you how to make the connections. So we are going to be taking our top rears and we got top rear left top rear right top front left and right we go to top front top front top front there we go and then our top mids go to the surround backs we're gonna do left and right and our right black and red okay check it out guys okay we have all our connections made finally all six atmos are going to be powered up through the Morant cinema 50 and then we're pre-outing to all of our bed layers the front left right center and surround left right and then we got our two subs pre-outing right here the back of the room for the pb16 ultras and then these are our 8K ports going out to the projector and going out to our Kaleidoscape and the Apple TV. Now that you see the terminals on the back, as you can see on the screen, it lines right up. Perfect. So let's keep continuing forward. All right, so now that we have our amp assigned properly, as a recap, we have our floor, our base bed layer as a five channel. We have our heights, six of them. We have our front layout and mid layout and rear layout all top at most. And we're pre-outing the fronts. I'm actually pre-outing the full bed layer. Let's go ahead and go to our levels just to verify that all the connections are made properly because earlier in the video you may recall I had told you I'm just going to roughly connect to my Pantages G4 audio control amp and then I can switch the terminals on the back of the unit so let's do that now all right front left hooked up right ironically <laughs> all right front left center front right surround right surround left. So the surround left and the surround right were switched. So all I'm going to do is just redo my connections on those two, which is super simple. Okay. So all I did was just switch them. So now surround right, surround left, top, front, right, Top middle right, top rear right, top rear left, top middle left, 
top front left, subwoofer one, I forgot something. We need to do our two subwoofer selections, speaker configuration. Our fronts are gonna be assigned to small. This is gonna cross over all of our bass, our heavy, deep, low frequency to our subs. Only run your fronts as large if you're not running subwoofers, typically. Even if they're big old speakers, guys, because you want that bass to be sent to over to the subs. And then we're gonna do speakers for the subwoofers. Gotta change the fronts back to small. As you can see, whenever I selected no subwoofer, it automatically switched right over to large because then it's gonna utilize the woofers. These are only little four inch woofers, but say you had some big old towers that have like eight inch woofers in them, you could really extend those to the max. It's not gonna perform like a subwoofer, but you know, it does the best that it can. Subwoofer mode. And we'll be talking about the subwoofer configurations a little bit more once I go over the direct live setup with four subwoofers in future videos. So now the last thing to do, guys, is just going to be to go ahead and run your Odyssey setup again, which is a microphone that just plugs right into the front of the unit. This is a little mic stand that comes with the Cinema 50. And as of right now, the Odyssey calibration is all that is available currently. So I am going to show you how to do the Odyssey setup. You put this in your primary seating area like this. I'm just gonna be setting it right here between my two seats. This is all I have set up for now. And then I'll move it to position two and three. And that's all I'm gonna run for today. I would recommend running it in all seating areas if your configuration is final. I'm not quite done with this space. So this is just gonna be a temporary calibration, but I did wanna point out that this is important, guys. Surprisingly enough, I can't tell you how many times I've gone into clients' homes and their system's just zeroed out. And they're like, yeah, Best Buy calibrated it. And I'm like, did they? <laughs> Okay, well, um, that's not how we roll here at 3Media. We at least, at the bare minimum, want to run the Odyssey calibration, right? So we're gonna, we've already gone through the amp assign and channel select, so I don't need to show that, but as you can see, we have our six Atmos, our five channel bed layer, and two subwoofers. Channel select, subwoofer, we want two speakers. Selected, so now we got the two sub, and let's go ahead and start our calibration. This is just stating that you can either use the paper stand or a tripod. I'm using the paper stand for this demonstration because this is what you'll receive when you purchase your unit from us. Comes standard with the Morant Cinema 50. Subwoofers, it's gonna check and see if I need to dial these puppies down, which these are massive 16 Ultras. I probably will have to. Let's see. Starting in the primary seating area, begin the test. So we're gonna do subwoofer matching to give the amplifier a good reference point as to, you know, where to start with the calibration. Once you get down into the 70s, it'll start giving you the green light. So we're gonna go all the way down to negative 25 dB on subwoofer number one. Subwoofer number two, same thing. We're going actually on this puppy we're going all the way down to negative 26 dB. These 16 Ultras are bangers, guys, and they're at a really reasonable price point for the performance. They go all the way down to 13 hertz. So if you're wanting something that hits hard and you're not looking to break the bank, like we have crazy stupid hi-fi subs, but these guys come in at a good price point and man, do they perform well. All right, next. That's kind of what this whole project here at the house is about, is showing an average consumer setup, something that I personally believe is incredible value for the money. This 300 series with the Flax Wolfers, aluminum, magnesium, inverted dome tweeters with their F sandwich technology. This 300 series all the way around is just incredible for the money. Same goes for this Epson, and really everything in this setup is geared towards affordability and performance. Let's get into the calibration here. Position number one, at ear height, go. All right, 
you can see it did identify all of the speakers. We're going to hit next. We're going over to our listening position number two. All right, listening position number two. Go. All right, now we have it over here in position number three. Continue. All right, guys. So I would highly urge you if you're at the point where your room is ready for calibration and you have all your seating in the permanent position and all your cue sticks up, go ahead and continue forward and run the calibration in every single seating area. This is just a quick tutorial, so we're gonna continue and hit complete. I would recommend turning on Odyssey Dynamic EQ. I'm gonna save this as preset number one since this is going to be my final calibration for the time being. I have a secondary calibration saved, which I'll show you on a separate video for preset number two. What it's doing right now is it's analyzing the data and assigning the appropriate amount of power to each speaker as well as doing the crossovers. So that's why this is so important, guys, because if you're not running the Odyssey calibration, this processor has no reference point as to what to cross those speakers over at and how much power to give them. Okay, so we can go ahead and remove the calibration mic and hit next. All right, we're done. So now if you go into the tone test, you can see there's a bunch of different volume outputs through the tone test. That's because it measured all of the speakers and assigned the appropriate amount of output. Alrighty, that's kind of a quick overview. I hope this helps you guys with making your connections. All right guys, so I am gonna play a demo for you now on the Kaleidoscape. Again, we have the Epson LS800 with the 120 inch Silverflex Epson screen and a full 5.2.6 Atmos system from Focal and SVS. And I have played a demo scene from this before. So I'm gonna play this same scene because I'm personally interested to hear um, in this room, four Atmos speakers versus six Atmos speakers. It should be like I'm in a bubble, uh, very immersive. So I'm gonna do Saving the Miners from the new movie Dune. Enjoy. I got one word for you, wicked. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. So stoked to finally have a system in the house. You guys don't know, it's been killing me. I go into y'all's homes and listen to these insane demos and then I go back to the house and I got nothing. 
<laughs> so it's been a journey, but finally we are settled down in this house and I'm just super excited to deck the whole place out in high quality audio and video. I'm gonna document the entire series for you guys um, so that you can follow along, find some inspiration as to things that you can do in your own home. I hope that you're enjoying the series so far. If you like it, give me a big thumbs up and drop comments down below. Let me know if you'd like to see some other things. Another thing that I wanted to point out for you guys who may have not seen previous episodes, uh, this LS800 is a great performer with this ALR screen. It's also ultra short throw, specifically made from Epson. It's a great performer in the dark, which you just saw, but I wanted to show you an example of with the lights and windows all 100% on. I got a wall of windows back here and 12 foot windows to the left and right. I got these screen innovations nano shades as you can see are motorized which really makes this a great flex space for me to shoot content for you guys and review products as well as you know we can hang out up here and not have to be sitting in the dark i wanted to give you guys inspiration for everybody around the country who doesn't have a perfect rectangular shaped room that you can create a home theater space really in any room and that's what we do here at dream media is you guys call us set up a video consultation with one of my specialists and we're going to walk through your space and we're going to tailor a package with custom products like in wall, on wall, whatever. We even have custom speakers that we can make to exact lengths. We have a lot of different choices and we can tailor packages to fit your exact room, no matter how less than ideal it is. So as you can see, this Epson LS800 4000 lumen output projector um, with this ALR screen still performs pretty well with all of this light in the room. I'm gonna turn on all 12 of these can lights and still washable. <laughs> Obviously, if you really want the best quality out of it, you can get some motorized shades. A lot of you guys will be using this in a flex space, maybe your living room or something like that. So automated shades are definitely the way to go. If you guys like this video, give me a big thumbs up and make sure to smash that subscribe button down below. Till next time, this is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching.